I always feel like when I do things with Jamie that just something fucking awful is about to happen. <laughs> do you know what I mean? What do you mean? I just like, there's no way that this is just a chat. Anyway, go on. Of course it is just a chat. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Private Parts Podcast. This is where we read the most intimate and sorted details of our lives. Where are we looking? You, you're, just, you're just looking at me. Oh, it's, well, I haven't intro you is yet. Is this radio? It's not radio, it's a podcast. What the hell's a podcast? <laughs> a podcast is basically not like... one of your silly little projects. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, I, before, I just, I, there's no point. Here he is, Mr. Spencer Matthews. Hello, hello. Who are we talking to? To our audience. Right. Do you have much of an audience? Yeah, we have, we have like, I mean, 15 to 30 million listeners. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's how many listeners we oh, have. Uh, okay, <laughs> cool. Glad I came. Um, so, uh, just to all of our listeners, uh, we don't, this week, we don't have Francis Ball, we don't have uh, Tom. Thank God for that. They, they are busy. So, in their place, we have uh, Spenny, Matthews, Pug. What other names do I have for you? Um, you used to call me Fatty. No, I never called you fatty. You, did, you bullied me, and, and and nowadays, you know, the world the world doesn't accept bullies. I never, it? I never once ever called you fatty or anything like that. I but, s- although you were very complimentary on my appearance just now, so yeah, thank you. I, you, you know, you're taking it back. You're looking good, but no, I never said you were fat. What I used to say, there were occasionally times when I was fat. Not when you were, yeah, when you were, <laughs> when you were fat. I, one of my favourite ever times with you, right? So, so to all our listeners, you know, Spenny and I go back since we were about what 16, 15. 15 years old, don't we? We liked each other then. Yeah, I thought you were the biggest prick. Yeah, well, fair play. We we had we had a mute we had our our kind of first ever girlfriends were best mates. Yeah. Weren't they? And and Did you ever sleep with my ex girlfriend? No. No. Did you not? No, no, no. Not, not when I was going out with her, but did you ever at one point sleep with her? No, that's Proud Lock. Did Proud Lock sleep with her? Yeah, I think so. This girl called Lucy Job I was completely and utterly in love with. <laughs> Yeah, did Prowlock sleep with her? Pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she had a but whale of a time. But don't worry, he slept with mine as well, so that, that's fine. <laughs> we both got a kick in the teeth. Prowlock was pretty cool back at school. What happened? <laughs> this is, this is, we'll start from the very beginning, actually. So it's this is basically what we do on the podcast, okay? So I just ask you loads of questions, we chat, we have a lovely time. It's pretty simple and easy, right? Mm-hmm. Because anyway, I, wanna, I do want to discuss one thing with you, because I'm well, still one of the funniest times I've ever had with you in my entire life is when you were, <laughs> when you were a little bit, you know, you were a little bit self-conscious about your weight, right? Well, I was fat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're a little bit fat, and we had just started doing Made in Chelsea. Yeah, and I had was, that really nice long hair as well. You had some beautiful long hair. Yeah, we were going out quite a lot, and <laughs> Spencer Matthews, ladies and gentlemen, he <coughs> he basically said, "Jamie, you'll never guess what." So we just started doing Made in Chelsea. We we're super excited. He said, "You'll never guess what." Um, I'm in Heat magazine, and we're like, "What? You're in, <laughs> you, you, you're, you're in Heat magazine?" <laughs> this was my, uh, I believe it was my first tour of the week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're like, what, you're in Heat magazine? This is so exciting. None of us have ever been in a magazine. It was like the biggest thing. We're like, oh my God, what's going to happen? So we went to Bassett Road <laughs> yeah. in, in Notting Hill and Spenny went straight to the counter. We went to like the nearest Londis or whatever it was. Nearest Londis. We went and found the nearest Heat magazine. I was standing back. I watched Pug walk up. It was like a moment to remember. He opened up the magazine. He flicked through the pages and all he went is, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, you think, do you think like it, it looked as though it looked as though they'd taken a photo and you know when you click on the the kind of you know top right or, or bottom right would have been fine because it kind of drags it out evenly it's like they clicked in the middle bit on the right and just dragged it out like I'd seen the photo the photo was fine I looked absolutely jacked like, like literally and, and then somehow they managed to make it so rubbish Shit! The best thing about it was Heat magazine. Made me look like an elephant. Yeah, it was a Heat magazine torso of the week, and I think you were the double page spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They normally only do one I'm, page. I'm pretty sure it didn't fit on one page. Yeah, because because they could they violated the picture so much. But, it was but absolutely unbelievable. Why didn't they just print the picture that we sent them? But you know this is I mean? this is the thing, right? Okay, I suppose so. Ever since you, okay, what are you? Because you're like a sensitive guy. And a lot of people don't realise this, is mm. that you are actually a sensitive person. And when you were like, okay, what have been your biggest, like, because this is private watch, what have been your biggest insecurities like growing up? Was it always weight and things like that? Was it something else? Um, yeah, I guess I kind of, like, you know, I came, I came from a kind of French-speaking background. And, you know, I was like the little French kid at an English uh, day school. And uh, I was treated like shit. I arrived late. Uh, you know, you know, into the into the school year, the the people had already formed their their coalitions, their groups, and, and I I was the the outside foreigner, you know, and uh, that's kind of 
that was kind of it. I'd come home and kind of whinge and have a huge fry up and, you know, not do my homework and go to bed. And You had a fry up in the evening? I used to love a fry up. Like, honestly, <laughs> it's so nice. I'd pour, pour, I'd pour olive oil. Like, mum would, like, I, we'd take the Sunday roast leftovers, yeah, and we'd put it all in a pan and we'd <laughs> chop everything up and just pour oil onto it. Can you imagine how unhealthy that is? This is like... As a kid. This, yeah, this is like this is like before kind of, you know, the health industry, it, it was what it is. You know, this is a long time ago. You've got to remember, I'm, I'm 30 years old this year. So this is when I was a little kid. And like, it was so strange. Just we, we never used to get kind of educated on health the way we are now. Do you know what I mean? That, that used to be just normal and I'd have bowls of it. The, the funniest thing about Spen is that when uh, for, his, for his present... As a kid, he was taken to Pizza Hut to show how the pizzas were made. <laughs> and Delicious. I, I was, I was that actually, was his present. Like, that was I, I, his present. I, I, yeah. Because if anyone tried well, to touch his hang pizza... On a, hang on a second. I got other gifts too, but, you know, that, that was the best gift. <laughs> you know, we... Learning how the pizzas at Pizza Hut were made. It's fantastic. They actually, they actually put holes. They put holes in the base of the pizza with the, this, like, weird proddy thing. And, and they spray their pizzas with cans of this, like, fluorescent orange oil. I don't think I I've had one ever again <laughs> after, after being in the, Wait, in hang the, on. They spray their pizzas. They, with, they finish the pizza and it looks great and everything's yeah. good. And then it comes out the other and then they get a spray like paint can and spray it with orange grease, which makes it taste delicious. And, and, and you know, <laughs> there must be like crack in, the, in, in it or something. <laughs> you know, you get addicted to these pizzas as a young kid. You come, you come back for more. I did, reckon it's what's in the can. Did you used to have stuffed crust as well? I loved the stuffed crust. Like, really? honestly, honestly, there were times when I, I was capable of eating two large pizzas. Like, quite... No, you can eat two. I could, mate. I, I couldn't, you couldn't stop me. And if someone tried to take a slice of my pizza, I would be... So angry. It only got to the point where, like, I realised it was acceptable to share a pizza, like, in my teenage years. <laughs> like, 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 I, I was so protective. But of- also, I remember that time when we we had we were sort of sitting in Ollie had in Peyton's house, and this is a friend of ours, and we were with. <laughs> We were with uh, Kagi Dunlop, who's a good friend of ours, and we were with uh, Oliver Proud at left actually. And you said, "Oh, we're going to order pizzas," and we ordered four like 17 inch pizzas or oh, honestly like four of them and you demolished three of those pizzas well they were quite thin <laughs> like you know you know it, they're about as big it, as a tire it's, it's like worth... eating three tires and now i'm flipping tires <laughs> for my boxing fights for comic relief sorry sport relief <laughs> yeah yeah get that one right yeah well you know but listen going back to the beginning about insecurities and things like that because um i this is the thing this is my theory you know my theory behind the why that people always used to think that you were like this lothario and things like that and it's because at the very beginning you were this French boy as you said you came to this school Bonjour and, uh, yeah, Bonjour, ça va Tu parles français Je parle français, oui, très bien, merci Ah oui, d'accord Si, did it work on you? It does work on me. See. So, but you were this French boy who came to this school, right? And uh, as you said, everyone had formed these like coalitions as we were friends, and they were like, "Who the hell is this French kid who's come?" Okay. Yeah. And so you come from Saint Bart's and all those kind of things, yeah. and you thought the coolest way to, or the best way to become friends with someone was to, you know, this story was what, to be player. Was to be player. So what happened? Um, I asked out a uh, young lady thinking it would be very, very cool to do so. This is like before my first, like I only had my first kiss when I was like 13 or something. So I'm 10 here. So, so I've got no idea what I'm doing. Uh, and, and I figure, you know, I might invite her round to mine to watch Dragon Ball Z or whatever was cool back then. You know, who knows? <laughs> First, it's know, Dragon we, Ball Z, not yeah. Dragon Ball Z. Well, in, in French, it's actually Dragon Ball Z. So. <laughs> Wait, you can't say it's not Dragon Ball Z. It's well, not Dragon in French. It's not Dragon. It's Dragon. No, it's not. It is. It is. Dragon. Do you want to look it up? It's Dragon. Un Dragon. No, it's but, not un Dragon. It, it is un Dragon. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's fluent French here. So you and went, it, oh, hey, tu pas Dragon. Well, I don't. Well, I certainly didn't say that because she was English, <laughs> and that's not French. Uh, but no, we, but we we ended up we ended up. Kind Kind of, yeah, you know, anyway, it didn't go so well. I was going to invite her around for an orange juice or something and, you know, maybe we'd hold hands or, or something like that. And um, yeah, What were you expecting? Get a hand job? I, I, oh, <laughs> God, it, my, my mind would have blown, I think, amongst other things, if, if I'd been given a hand job at age 10. Jesus, that's, 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 that's good going. Early, early, early start. Uh, so, no, we, um, anyway, long story short, I, I, uh, I summed up the courage to walk across the, the playground, you know, that like menacing playground where, you know, all the cool kids are kind of sitting 
standing back and staring at you in their, in their soaps or their vans. And, you know, I'm there in, in boots or something just terribly uncool. And um, although boots did come in quite well after that, by the way, I'm not claiming that, but could, probably could do. Anyway, um, so I, I walk over to, to this girl and, and I start uh, having a conversation with her uh, and kind of the nerves are flowing and stuff. And a pigeon shat on my head. I couldn't, like, no, no, nothing could have been less lucky. So I'm standing there, summing up the courage, and I can see kind of Harry Hunt and James Booth. and all. I these, love how you remember uh, yeah, their names. Yeah, That's and, my favourite and, and, and all these cool kids just, like, looking at me with their eyes kind of cocked. And, uh, and yeah, I, 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 was, I was kind of known as the shithead from, from then on, because obviously... And- and obviously it was made worse by the girl not taking any sympathy in me. Of course, it was my fault for being shat on. So I was then disgusting. Do you know what I mean? Age 10. You know, the thing flies. It's supposed to be good luck. Not bad luck. You know, I had a really terrible nickname for a while after that. It just dribbled down the center of my forehead. Uh, so this is my theory. This is my theory that from that day on, you're literally like, right, I'm going to prove everyone wrong. Because then after that, you went into the classroom and sat in, <laughs> sat in the dark until the lesson started. Well, I wasn't very happy, Jamie. It wasn't a good day for me. <laughs> you know, I'd only just bought the same trousers and shoes as Harry and that one had happened. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so there. Okay, well, then what happened was, so you left the school and then you went to Eton College, right? Eton College was fantastic. Met some, met some lifelong friends there. Loved it. And, and for me it was kind of like a brand new start I was like I get to scrap this whole experience of prep school and start afresh and for all they know I could have been the coolest kid at prep school because none of them went to Eton so, <laughs> so, you so started yeah, brand I, was new. The, I was the only person to, to go to Eton from my prep school uh, thank god yeah someone must have paid someone uh, and anyway so, so literally so I ended up at Eton and I just figured Brand new start, fresh, you know, and eat and play, eat and play sport and stuff. So, you know, at Trevor Roberts Tutorial College, uh, there, there, were, there, was, there was no sport, really, so to speak of. So, you know, of course, I was a bit tubby. Uh, ended up uh, playing rugby and hockey and rowing and tennis and all that stuff and really loved it. Met Oliver Proudlock. Uh, he was very cool, by the way. Uh, also, with Oliver Proudlock, he, 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 did, he didn't dress like a weirdo then either. Like, no, he, he, he did he, dress he, like a weirdo. He did. He did. He had like long hair and like an earring, didn't he? Well, he he had really long. He was like a proper rebel. He had like a little cross earring and really really long hair. And obviously, Eaton would make him uh, take it all out. But he'd like find weird ways of like tying it up and like he he bent all the rules. But also, didn't what happened was that you uh, you basically you would invite people to St Bart's to the hotel Eden. Oh, yeah, to gain has. popularity, yeah. So didn't you go down to Oliver Proudlock at the football pitch? You just said, look, no, we were right. playing tennis, and I couldn't believe my luck that, you know, I was, I was knocking balls with, with this absolute hero of a man at school. And, you know, I, here you I... You were I, knocking balls? Yeah, with he, yeah, yeah. That's, we did a lot of that at Eton. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, here, and, here, and here I was just thinking, you know, great, here's my chance. So I just said... Do you want to come to the Caribbean with me? And you had never really spoken to him? Never. He's <laughs> so far too cool. But, so you, but, you invited him off the cup. It's like basically asking him on a date. Well, I'm not being funny, but he was the cool kid. So I was like, if I can get in with him, I'm in. And then Proudlot was just like, yeah. Yeah, Proudlot was like, yeah, man. He, or like, he didn't really speak like that back then either, but you know. No. Wearing a sombrero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man. Pull, pull his shoulders. With a do-rag on and, and, and a Colt 45. Yeah, 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 man. Got on his horse and rode into the sunset. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He used to be a cowboy. Now he's a rapper. He's moving on. Moving up in the world. Oh, my God. But then that kind of leads me on, right? So because then you became good friends with Ollie Proudlock, right? <coughs> yeah. Uh, who's a very good friend of ours who was on Made in Chelsea and all these kind of things. And uh, he then, this is my funny show, and this is... You part- should do a show and call it Life Stories and then get actually famous people to come and talk to you because we're pretty much going through, like, my entire life Yeah, but that's the whole point of it. This is our private. I want to hear all these different things. And I also, see. okay. Uh, <coughs> but then you went to... Uh, so then Ollie Proudlock, you became friends with him, right? And so what happened happened was is that he uh, decided to take you to a party, didn't he? And look, hey, let's just establish this. We've all, we've all dabbled in different things occasionally, but you had an experience with acid, didn't you? Well, I've, I've, I'm not sure it's great to bring it up again. I mean, the, the, you know, writing that book didn't do me any favours. Wait, so uh, he wrote an autobiography at 24 years old. After all the experience, he worked down a mine at 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah life was tough. You <laughs> he know. got sold into slavery yeah, when he was 15. growing up rough. 
you know, all those, and wrote all, a book about it. All those street fights, you know, <laughs> when I was scrapping for food. Um, yeah, so so we we had we had I had a I had, I'm just kidding. I had a great childhood. Um, definitely worth writing about just to piss everyone off. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what happened when that book came out. But then, so then you basically what happened? So you went to this party. And I accidentally, I accidentally uh, was given acid by a large bearded man who looked like he was having the time of his life. So what happened? So this guy came up to you at a party. It, and I, I can't stress enough that I, I, I was very young. I think we were eight, 17 or 18 and I, I did not part, I did not openly wish to park take in this acid taking, but it was given to me nonetheless. Uh, and it was extremely odd. <laughs> very odd. Like, so, so I don't know if anyone's ever, I don't know if anyone's on acid out there right now, but, but uh, say, save yourselves. It's no good. Wait, and also, didn't that famous, didn't that famous uh, um, architect or whatever, like see lobsters in the street for the rest of his life? Well, no, mate. Because he used to love acid. I've, I've taken mushrooms before and I've taken... That's so naughty, Jamie. I, it's very naughty. <laughs> I took mushrooms I, in the Boltons, in a house in the Boltons. This is a true story. And I got, and the house was so big, I got lost in the wine cellar. Yeah. I couldn't get out of the wine cellar. It was so hectic. <laughs> and then I did, I also did, you know, I, I did... I tried a little bit of, of I suppose that that stuff you call acid. At oh point. wait, it's well, no it's good. By I, I, well. I thought I was drowning in the taxi on the way home. But um, didn't you didn't you have didn't you have a fight with someone who wasn't there and have sex with a girl who wasn't there? Well, that I, you know, in back back in the day, my mind always used to play <laughs> tricks on me. But, but no, yeah, it, it was. I, I had I had several conversations. Uh, one of which went very well with someone and one of which uh, didn't go very well with someone and, and it turns out that neither person existed at all. <laughs> so I was, I was rolling around on the floor at one point having a full-on fight with, with this bloke just punching the ground and people kept coming up to me and tapping me on the shoulder going like, you all right, mate? And I was like, I'm in the middle of something! <laughs> like, uh, uh, everyone just thought I was absolutely insane. People kind of thought it was time for me to leave so uh, I think I ended up in a taxi <laughs> Uh, and, 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 and then you thought you were drowning Yeah, I thought I was drowning in the taxi Because there was cold air coming in And I thought it was water And then uh, there was that lad who was, who was sleeping next to me And, and his hair I thought it was snakes, and, and, and I, 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 I had what could only be described as a total meltdown. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then, wait, and then, to and then maybe the next day you woke up, you're like, oh God. I thought, it, I thought everything was fine. Like, like, honestly, I woke up, thought everything was okay. And I was like, oh, you know, and that feeling is, is just gone. And you're like, okay, today's a new day. Ooh, last night was very embarrassing, but you know, it's not, not too late to build bridges with all the popular kids, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> and also, all those haunting memories of a kid coming back. Oh God, where's the pigeon going to shit on oh, me again? Oh <laughs> yeah, and terrible. I'm surprised I didn't get chased by a huge pigeon, yeah. So uh, wait, so you so woke up the morning. So came in, but yeah, came in, and I went down the stairs, and this is at Ollie Proudlock's house. Couldn't believe I'd been invited there, by the way. And, uh, and, and literally, he was coming down the stairs. He couldn't believe it either after that. He was just like, what the fuck have yeah, I done? because he had even cooler friends. So like, I was way down the pecking order. Anyway, so, so like, there, there, was, there was this... Uh, the, so I crossed Oliver Proudlock's mum on the stairs, Lena. And um, she was like, how was last night? And I was like, fine. Yeah, no problem. All good. And uh, I went down the stairs and there was only one set of stairs in the house. And then uh, I got down, but I felt fine. I wasn't hung over or anything. Just kind of everything was normal. Everything was clear. And then I opened the door to the kitchen and Lena was cooking breakfast. <laughs> so one of the Lenas was not real. And at that point, and at that point, I, th I thought I'd surrendered myself to a life of schizophrenia. And, and I was... <laughs> I was, I was terribly upset. Um, you <laughs> I was terribly upset. I, I ended up, I ended up breaking down into tears, and of course, you know, well, you went, fake you... Lena or real Lena was there to comfort me, and I, I felt like I was being hugged, but of course, I, you know, that could have been nonsense as well. Uh, so and I then you went to the supermarket. Went to the supermarket. Yeah, big giant baby bells everywhere, and I can remember looking at this baby bell, thinking. There's no way that Baby Bell have released a Baby Bell of that size, you know, like, 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 you know, it just, it made no sense to me. And then I realized, obviously, oh, of course they haven't. It's just a little Baby Bell that looks enormous because I'm still on acid. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> so so all, all sorts of things like people had big wonky ears that I knew they probably didn't have and, and, and by this point we were like well that's it well, I genuinely thought my life was over <laughs> did you cry yeah of course I was in tears all day it was just terrible I was like I'm just I'm just I'm just a boy you know well, how has my life been poisoned in this manner you know I don't deserve any of this you know oh that, that's what was going God. through my head and then when did it when did because it, it suddenly because when I did mushrooms yeah. right, it, it suddenly was like a switch I had the worst trip and suddenly like a switch it literally just turned off yeah no it was exactly like that yeah we were playing FIFA and kind of none of it was making any sense to me and all of a sudden it just went zoom <laughs> And like you know, you know when you you know when you're sitting in like a a room with a noise, and you only notice there's a noise when the noise goes out. Yeah. So kind of like there's some weird like, like an aircon. Yeah, or an aircon. Like and it goes, Woof, and you're like, oh god, that was loud. You know, like <laughs> and now it's far more peaceful in there. <laughs> like, but, what, but you hadn't noticed it. Yeah, it was like that. But my brain just went, Woof, and I was like, oh, like I know I'm fine now. Did you say to everyone, I'm so sorry. This is what. I went, I went, kids, don't ever try acid. It's, 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 a, it's a life ruiner. I said, honestly, say no to drugs because, because I tell you what, that was a, an awful experience. Oh my God. I mean, that, that is the thing, but we've all like, we've all like had those sort of like different experiences, right? That we kind of just, you know, regret and things like that. But I think that's what like builds us as a person, do you know what I think? Because yeah. imagine imagine right now if you were still in that like matrix and all of this, that we had all of this <sighs> other life and all this thing had just been a dream. Well can you imagine, yeah, if everything that we've ever done actually hadn't happened. And we're actually just sitting in some padded cell somewhere oh, from god. that trip and we're, oh, we're god. got a fairly vivid imagination then. No, annoyingly, <laughs> annoyingly we Spen and I had this thing. It'd be annoying actually if we were in a padded cell somewhere and we actually our minds had gone like twisted because of whatever's happened. Annoyingly we would like have like a bit of an annoying life. It surely if you you like med dream things it would always be like you know euphoric because we go through our ups and downs the entire times in terms of work and things like that but that's the yeah. life we lead right yeah yeah spenny and i had this very funny thing that we always say you know i don't know where we're going with this my life's great <laughs> <laughs> so we always say this we have this we have this constant joke we go oh it's just a quiet time of year isn't it we have this uh, yeah yeah no it's perfectly normal for there to be no work in january isn't it <laughs> Uh, like, that's fine. Just January is a nothing month. There, there's, it's that's the same for everyone. Yeah, and December, and you know, we had this, we had this moment where um, Spenny and I obviously did this TV show called called Hunted. That was fun. Which was amazing. Which basically is I, I've spoken about to our listeners before, but basically where we became fugitives and we were chased by people and we were, did it for two weeks and we had to escape CCTV and things like that. And we did it. Whether other people were doing it was Steph and Dom, weren't they? Yeah. And we met. They didn't take it very seriously. They didn't take it seriously, but we met Steph and Dom, who were from Gogglebox, the posh girl from Gogglebox, and we met them at a Channel 4 party. Hang on, are we, call, are we referring to someone as the posh couple? Yeah, yeah, they were, we, yeah. They're the posh couple from Gogglebox. Are we the posh couple? Um, I'd, well, we are basically yeah. a couple, in a sense. I'd say that we are also quite posh, and if, if we're not posh, we sound posh. But we are also a couple. Y yes. We are a couple, but anyway, not, not not sexually. But but we're going. We met Steph and Dom at this Channel Four party, and you went up. You went up to them. You went up to them and said, "Oh my God, I love that show that you're doing." What was the show they're doing? Didn't really love it. It's kind of I was just making polite conversation. What was the show though? One star to five star. One star to five star. And they went, "How? It's on in the middle of the day." And you went, "Yeah, yeah. Have a lot of spare time." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, then I did. Now I don't. February's very, very busy, so there. <clears throat> but speaking of, like, uh, I suppose romance and things like that, like, our romance has been blossoming for like, a decade, longer than a decade, but your romance has blossomed a little bit more. Well, I'm very glad I did the jump, because uh, I met my fiancé. I very, mean, buddy, I know. it's so exciting. It, it actually is. Yes! It, it's terribly exciting. It's terribly exciting. You, uh... You will have responsibility at the wedding. I know, I'm going to be best man. I'm super excited. Mm, yeah. No, I am. Maybe. I'm well, best man. We'll, we'll see about that, but... No, 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 no. I'm best man. Right. Um, when is if I get ordained? If I get ordained in time for wedding, can I give you away? Like Joey does in Friends. Or you give us away. Yeah, I can, I can be the vicar. I'd really rather you weren't. <laughs> Why? If I was the vicar, it'd be sweet. I, can't, I, wouldn't, I couldn't take it seriously. Why not? If I was the vicar, it'd be sweet. You can, um, you can be master of ceremonies. How about that? 
Whatever it is, I'm doing something, whether it's best man, master ceremony. Master ceremony is a tough job. It's harder than best man. Best man makes a speech. Master of ceremonies has to like orchestrate the whole evening. Lovely. I was master of ceremonies at Richie Williams's wedding, and like your job doesn't actually end until like the after party. And you can't get that pissed as well. But but going back to this, so you went and did the jump, and you met Vogue. Well, hang on as well. Hang on. Should we just should we mention what the outcome of the jump was as well? Oh, what, what was it? I think I might have won. Yep, no, that was that was good. <laughs> Taking on all those Olympians. Bad luck, better luck next time. I well I came and saw you out in the jump, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You actually missed the show though. So Jamie Jamie I couldn't believe it. So the first live show, yeah, Jamie comes out with a couple of my like other best mates. And uh, Jamie, we ha- we all go out for a lovely dinner the night before, and then it's the first live show the following je- day. I lose my race to Lewis Smith because it was the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever done because I thought I was much better than him. But it turns out he came out of the blocks like a greyhound. Like <laughs> it's his, so upper bo- his upper body strength is so <laughs> ludicrous. Okay, so he can hold a handstand for like three minutes or something he, uh, without moving. He can do backflips. He's so strong like that. And he came uh, like uh, my skiing was probably good. not no, quite. It was good. It's it was fine. Good. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not, I've never skied before and he has. So there, Lewis, again, not another little dig for you. Uh, but he pulled, he pulled out and was four meters ahead of me out of the blocks. I was just like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> What's the panic? Like, oh, for I, I had a heart attack. Like literally, I was already a bit like, okay, okay, let's do this. Let's dust him. Everyone's watching. Like go, he's going live. You know, there's 3 million people watching it yeah, by yeah, the end. Yeah, yeah. And, and literally, we pulled out the blocks and Lewis Smith was on the other side of the room ahead of me. And I was like, he like flew. Anyway, so I lost that race. And then I get down, which meant that I had to jump. In the very first live show, I had to jump for survival. And, um, and I, I, I didn't realise that the jump was on the Sunday night. So I came Jamie, out. Jamie had left. <laughs> So Jamie was no longer in Innsbruck. So I get to the bottom. I saw I saw Max and Hugo and and you know and, and Kevin I think was there. Oh, they like, were friends. Other uh, friends uh, that were there. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, had was, left. I was like, "Where's Jamie?" Like, because I was getting ready for my jump. And I was like, "Where's Jamie?" And they were like, "Oh, he went home." <laughs> <laughs> I literally I had to catch couldn't my flight. believe it. He, he flew to Innsbruck to have dinner <laughs> and then flew back. I was like, the whole point of you being here is is to is to check out the show. Do you know what I mean? But then, but then out there is that's where you you met Vogue Williams, your fiance, soon to be Vogue Matthews. Vogue, Ma- is she going to be? Is she going to be one of the people? She's going to be Vogue Williams Matthews? No, she's going to well, be Vogue Matthews. Well, I think she's just going to be Vogue Matthews. Have you asked her? Uh, she's definitely going to be a Matthews. She's going to be a Matthews. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't know whether or not she wants to keep Williams. We're not going to do that double barrel thing. Are we? No, We're posh enough. I don't think so. Yeah. So, so then, so wait. So you, but then you guys, I, from what I know, you you guys hooked up out there. But you were friends, right? And you never thought anything was going to happen. We were pals. Uh, we we were. Kind of, we you know I don't want to get too personal, but we were sort of seeing each other, but in a very casual manner out there. We were just pals. I don't think either of us expected anything to happen uh, when we got home and. Your heart plays tricks on you, doesn't it? You came home and we, we it, was, it was difficult over there because we were competing against each other for a start. So you've got that, and she's very competitive. So you've got that element of, you know, you don't want to be kind of too close to your enemy in a weird way because we're both so competitive. And uh, we were having a lot of fun and we were, became very good friends. And then uh, she hurt her leg and had to go back. She tore her ACL and had to go back to London. And I said, you know, when I get back to London, let's go for a lovely date. And, uh, and we did. And I'm pretty sure I told her that I loved her on that date. No, you didn't. Yeah. So. But, when, but when did they, so you don't love, when did but it in, click in, 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 did in, it in the very you? first episode of, of The Jump, it's actually, it actually made the cut. Um, when we're just training at Hemel Hempstead. I uh, I said to the cameras, they were like, because I shared a lift with her. I thought it'd be cheeky. And obviously we shared a lift up together. And uh, I said down the lens to the camera, kind of as a joke at the time, I was just like, I'm going to marry that girl. And they were like, do you like Vogue Williams? I was like, yeah, what's not to like? I'm going to marry that girl. And it made the cut. So it's quite funny. Oh, I love that. Yeah. But so. when was, honestly, because I know you better than, I honestly know you better than your mum knows you. I really think I do. I doubt that. No, I do. I do. I do. <laughs> <coughs> and um, <coughs> when did you know, when was the moment that it literally like, it, it clicked? And you're like, right, this is, this is freaking it. Because I've seen, I've said this to you, because I said about, sorry to cut your blood, I said about, I think it was six, eight months ago. Mm. You said to me, I really like this girl. And I said, okay, well, in four months' time, if you still say that to me, then I'll believe you. And in four months' time, you were still saying it, but with more. You were, like, more in love. And I was like, shit, this we is We just it. became, we came, we, we're kind of best pals, obviously. We spend, you know, mo- so you're, you're what? Uh, she's my best girlfriend. Okay, good, thank you. She's my best female clear. friend. <laughs> okay, that's don't, fine then. Don't worry about it. Don't have a heart attack. <laughs> uh, but no, she, you know, we, we spend an awful lot of time together. But if someone was on a cliff... 
And you had to push one person off. I would th- fling you off the cliff. <laughs> like, it wouldn't, it, uh, like, in a heartbeat, I wouldn't even have to think about it. Like, if it was, what, you or Vogue? Yeah. I, I had one bullet. You, no, not even a bullet. You, you, had to, you had to push. I had to brutally murder you one of you. <laughs> brutally murder us. Oh, well, then you, obviously. I'm not going to brutally murder my fiance. Like, do you know what I mean? That's just silly. And to be fair, I would miss you. But I'd probably miss her more, given that we live together and we're starting a life together. And, you know, hopefully we're going to have a family together. So, you know, you have other mates. Okay, wait, so, so wait, so when was the moment? So your best friends. And when was that moment where you're like, actually, because you went from being, I suppose, and this is just your, this is just your personality. You went from being so one way to so the other way in, in a matter of months. It's, right? it's a question of respect, you know, and it's not that I didn't, uh, that I disrespected my exes in any way, but, you know, we were doing uh, a TV show about relationship drama and that's what it boiled down to. So naturally arguments are emphasized and you're put in situations that you don't want to be in. And, you know, the show is very real, but obviously it's, it's kind of, would I end up on a boys night in every single episode? Probably not, you know, like, so you get put in all these, in these situations and, you know, plied full of drink and that where, you know, it's, it's kind of unwelcome. Vogue, um, Vogue and I, I just have a huge amount of respect for her. It's completely 50 50. The relationship is. And is, she's epic. Is even, and she's just cool. All her friends are cool. I like her. I love, I love her family. My family loves her more than they love me, I think. Uh, my own brother the other day basically said that he trusted Vogue more than me, which is uh, ideal. Obviously, it's exactly what you want to hear. But, you know, at least, at least she's becoming part of the family. So that's great. But, but, then, but then what you did, because uh, you asked her to marry you at The Lion King, didn't you? I did. Because it's her favourite play. Yeah. So, well, no, it's not her favorite play. She'd actually never seen it, but we're both, you know, Disney fans at, at heart. Our first date was, oh, well, like our first proper date was to, our first trip away was to Disneyland Paris, um, which was fun. But when you, you wouldn't sh- want to stay there too long. Oh, God, it's dated. Yeah. yeah Do bit, you remember when we went there? It's a bit dated. But Disneyland Paris, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a one day, two day thing, Max. You know, you would not want to stay there for a week. It's no. very mind numbing. You know, and on all the all the music, you know, the themes. Anyway, we both like Disney and we ended up coming back uh, and I just thought The Lion King is my personal favourite Disney film. Hers is Beauty and the Beast, but they don't have a Beauty and the Beast play. <laughs> so I had to just roll with mine. You oh, could no. have dressed I'm up not... as the Beast. That's well, yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eat your dinner. <laughs> don't touch the rose. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. So no, fuck. Can you imagine? Can you remember? You'd be, you would be livid though. To be fair, if Belle touched the rose, like honestly. Serious? Well, I want the yeah. last petal falls. That's it. That's you know. got. Yeah, that's it. You remain the beast for life, and she's fucking around with the rose. Also, can she's we just joking. establish the, the the beast the fucking around with the rose? The beast isn't that hoot. The beast is all the right. beast is the most high end prince in all the land, mate. Yeah, and he, he's he's like, he's actually rather sweet. Like yeah, lovely when he has his haircut and and the makeup on. Looks By the way, smart. Can I, can I just say the new Beauty and the Beast film with the one with the actual people in it it is is amazing yeah it's incredible incredible Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i even think evan watson did a good job but also do you know do you know i found out another just quickly go into other disney films you know you know uh mirror mirror on the wall isn't actually um what they say in the snow white it's not it's mirror mirror on the wall is fake that's not what they actually say in the actual disney show do you know what they say they say magic mirror on the wall and everyone thinks it's mirror mirror but it's actually not right no worries just thought you would Okay. Take what, that home with you. If you don't it, take anything home today, you can take that with you. Right. I'll email it to you a little bit later. Okay. It's good. Yeah. Make sure you do that. Just follow <laughs> follow up on that one. That would be that would be ideal. Wait. So, so you so, so you took it to the Lion King. Yeah. Uh, so, you did it on stage with the audience, or what happened? So I so I'd organised. Um, I was trying to organise the at the end of the show. You know when everyone comes out for for the big clap. Oh hey, it's Simba. Hey, it's Mufasa. I like, I wanted to come out on stage oh with, the, with, 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 with the ring and and like mic'd up and propose. Uh, in front of an audience, basically, quite a few of her friends told me that she would fucking hate that. So, so, like so, anyone would. So, also, like kids, so, like heckling in the front. Oh, you shut up! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fuck off. Uh, yeah, so, 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 yeah, that that was um, that was out the window quite early doors. But I still enjoyed the idea of the Lion King. So basically, we uh, I went down there and met the production team and stuff, and they very kindly said that they would. Um, Put the sun, you know, the big, big iconic the newspaper. Uh, <laughs> they would get the newspaper there. No, the sun, <laughs> the iconic sunrise in the Lion King at the beginning, at the presentation of Simba. Yeah, uh, they'd put that back. Is on. it the presentation or the birth? 
the, well, they present him, don't they, to the... Is it, to the world? No, it's when Mufasa comes down and he goes, Scar, I didn't see you at the presentation of Simba. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and Scar goes, oh, oh, and it turns around. What? Yeah. What does Scar do? I don't know, ask, oh, Jer- oh, ask oh. Jeremy Irons. <laughs> well, he's dead, so... What? I think, is Jeremy Irons not dead? Oh, no, that's... No, I'm his... pretty sure he's not dead. <laughs> he's the one... Someone died, he's like Jeremy Irons. Okay, well, yeah, I'm sure there are many people... I'll email people. that one to you I, later I, as well. I'm sure there's loads of people who are quite like Jeremy Irons that die on a daily basis. Anyway. Um, so, he's hanging. So, then you... you yes, yeah, so, 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 long story short, I'd organised this private backstage tour for just us. Usually, there's a few people that opt for this option, but I picked a day down the line where it was just for us. And uh, we they basically blocked it out, and they got rid of Pride Rock and put the sunrise back and lit it all in kind of oranges and pinks and stuff and had the whole stage clear, cleared. Are you, you shitting yourself at this point? Uh, it was completely fine until the getting down on one knee bit because it is just awkward. <laughs> what do you mean it's awkward? Come on, I don't, what do you mean? It's like, it's like, it's like, it was great. Like, I loved it. And I, I was very calm. Did you go from, did you go from... Had a whiskey at half time. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Did, you, did you go from standing straight to knee or did you yeah. put your hand on the ground? How, how did you approach it? So I, so I went, uh, so I went into basically... Uh, did you make that funny noise? We, we went into, as you we, we, oh, my shoelace is undone. <laughs> yeah, and so, so, so I went backstage and basically said the reason uh, that it had, because Vogue had a job that came in the night of the Lion King, but about a week ago, and she was like, oh, we need to move the Lion King. And I was like, we can't. <laughs> like, you know, I, 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 I designed this ring. I spent months designing this ring and picking the stones and getting them cut a certain way and all sorts, like with, with my pal Neil Dutson of Dutz and Rocks and, uh, and, and we it's a little uh, ad right there <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah there you go uh, we're actually starting a business together but we'll move on to that in a second anyway uh, so, so we ended up um, we ended up uh, I had this amazing ring in my pocket and, and everything and it was fantastic and we got on to the stage and we were left completely alone and at that point I think she realised something was going on because the tour had stopped the two women had just walked off and uh yeah, I basically said the reason that we couldn't change the date tonight was because I had tonight's date engraved on the ring that I'm about to give you. Oh, I love that. Arrogant move. Imagine if you had a massive argument that day. Shit. <laughs> yeah, go. but that's fine. No, it doesn't matter because so love prevails all. It does. And then uh, and then I got down on one knee and uh, proposed to her. And what, and what did you say? I said, so that, I, said, I said that she was my best friend. Sorry, Jay. I, I, had, to, I, I had to say it. Best yeah. girlfriend. Did you just you said that? I think I might have just said best friend, full stop. I but. just think when you start a relationship, you don't <laughs> want to start it on lies. That's all I... You don't want to start things on lies. That's okay, all I... Okay, well, I'll take that into account. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, so so I, I basically said um, I I said you're my best friend uh, and I love lie, you. Lie, so I, I, right, and I love you very much. Not a lie. In fact, neither are lies. I don't know why I'm playing into your stupid thing. Uh, and then, and then uh, I just said, will you make me very happy and be my wife? And then I forgot to put the ring on her finger. I think I closed the box and <laughs> stood up. I went uh, joking. And then I went, she said yes. And, <laughs> and uh, Mufasa and Simba and Nala came out for a quick hug. Do they come dressed as... Because they're, they're my best pals. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then... <laughs> And then, uh, and then we, and then, and then we took a photo uh, with them again because you know that's a great memory because they're very important to me. Those three. Uh, and, uh, it's a great picture, though. It's a great I picture. I can imagine. Yeah, it's like you won. It's like you won a prize to be there. It did, it did feel as though it, it did at the time feel as if you know, like you my, my our best friends could be here, you know. But but no, we 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 had them and they did a cracking job. So I was very pleased with the Do performance. They speak in their accents do they come on all fours no <laughs> they, they actually stand on on their rear legs for the entire show <laughs> they, at no point at no point do they crawl in any way so so no they well i suppose in that sense you could say they remained in character <laughs> <laughs> they were still dressed <laughs> But anyway, we had the, the Lion King and Disney couldn't couldn't have been more accepting of us, and they they, they were fantastic. And then we hopped oh. in a, a black cab actually, and and went home because uh, that's how cool we are. Oh, buddy, listen, from the you know how proud I am of you. You know that from the bottom. I, I can, and also you know I was I, I think I was lucky enough to be one of the first people to to, to hear about it. Um, and so from someone, no, uh, <laughs> not uh, yeah, no, I yeah. was, I was, I was, I was one of the first. And honestly, I, I couldn't be happy. I think she is simply wonderful. Simply the best.
best. <laughs> uh, right, is that what, when you're going to play that track, isn't it? Yeah. What, do you know what we do also on the podcast, by the way? What? Is we like to play a little game. Okay. Okay. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to, uh, I'm going to let you do just one version of it. We're going to do just one quick prank call. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to get you to prank call Harrods. Okay. And you have to blag to them yeah. that you are Spencer Matthews and you want something for free. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. You have to do it and you have to, you have to go through with it. Okay. You have to keep going through with it. You're Spencer Matthews. And do we get to tell them at the end that it's a joke? Of course you can if you want to, but but you know you got to go with they, it. They, you do as the as the bloody host. No, I'm no, not no. just going. Go, what well, when they say no? I'm not going joking. <laughs> no, I'm actually <laughs> filming this <laughs> as a podcast. <laughs> you have to intervene. And say, okay. I can't wait for you to sit back and not say anything. <laughs> okay, okay. I will. I will intervene. Hold on. I will intervene. So what do I? What am I trying to get? Um, you were trying to get, uh, hold on, I was just trying to get this whole fucking one. Oh, here we go. You were trying to get anything for free. Anything for free. You just, you just want, you, you, you just got engaged. Uh, you're Spencer Matthews. <laughs> so ridiculous. Related to royalty, and you no, want I, to get. I'm not related to you royalty. You could use that card, though. You could use that I'm card. I'm not using that card. <laughs> use that card. You're so ridiculous. <laughs> you know that we, like, specifically tell the press not to mention that, and you, my best pal, bring it up. Do you <laughs> okay, mind? Okay, here we go. Ready? I'm calling Harrods. Okay, you can say whatever you want to say. I'm not going to. What interview. am I trying to get? You can just something for free. You just look, you, you've lost your wallet, and you need some food, and you. you, you what? <laughs> Yeah, just anything. You just go with it. This is the whole point of the podcast. Ready? Here we go. So I'm going to call them. It's Harrods. Here we go. It's on speaker, and you hold it. I'm just going to say, I want, some, I want, a, I want a gift. <laughs> Welcome to Harrods. We are open from Monday to Saturday, from 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. and on Sundays from 11:30 a.m. until 6 p.m. Good to know. We're browsing only from 11:30 a.m. It's an until 5 p.m. <laughs> Good afternoon, Harrods. Hi there, who am I speaking with? I'm Harrod Switchboard, how may I help you? Oh, hi darling, uh, could you put me through to someone who might be able to help? Uh, my name is Spencer Matthews and I just got uh, engaged. I was wondering whether you have any gift packages that you could send my way. Sure, one minute please, sir, thank you. <laughs> That's so good, That's so good. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so good at Blaggy, the best. <clears throat> Can you imagine if I get something out of this? Mm, like a Cartier ring or something. How many listeners do you actually have? <laughs> 15, 16,000. But weekly. <coughs> the hell is going on? Let's just wait, hon. I'm just trying to turn you now, and congratulations, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. They all laugh again. Thank you for calling. It's all coming back again. They're laughing. Apologise for not being able to answer your call. Please leave your name, telephone number, and a brief message after the tone. That will do, won't it? Leave a message. Thank you. Hello, it's Spencer Matthews. It's Spencer Matthews calling. You may have heard of me from such shows as Main Chelsea, The Jump. I'm a celebrity. Uh, what else? Jamie, Jamie's Happy Hour. Anyway, a bunch of shows, uh, mainly to do with Channel 4. Uh, I'm also doing something coming out of Comic Relief. Basically, I'd like a gift. Please. Oh shit, it's Sport Relief as well. I'd like a, uh, I'd like, I would like a gift, please. Uh, I've just got engaged and uh, we haven't heard a peep out of you guys. So I'd like some sort of hamper or something. My email address is <laughs> at sp.co.uk. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, 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 and now we don't get to tell them that it's a joke <laughs> because, they're, because they're no longer online and you've hung up. Great, cool. <laughs> It's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Did I miss out any shows? Because that would be annoying. <laughs> we haven't heard a peep out of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm engaged now. I haven't heard anything out of you. Oh my God, bug, I love you. Oh God, that's just this is one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my entire life. Okay, good. Um, right, Puggy, also what we do at Private Parts is I very quickly read you my diary. It's two days. You can <laughs> literally jump in at any point you want. Okay. But it's hilarious. Are you ready for this? Monday. 
It's funny the way life changes so quickly. One moment you are living carefree with only one worry is literally dying and where you're going to get your next drink or shag from. And literally on a sixpence, everything changes. You never wrote that. I did write that. Right. Why would you write that? Because <laughs> it's my diary. It's like the weirdest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's not. The weirdest thing I've ever heard was about a second ago when you left a voicemail for Aaron's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I reckon I actually might get something out of that, so whatever. Hey, if you don't get it, you don't ask. It's very if you don't true. ask, you don't get it, sorry. <clears throat> this pretty much came to my realisation when my homie, Spencer Matthews, told me he was getting engaged, but also, having spent more and more time with this girl, all I want to do... Oh, <clears throat> this pretty much came to my realisation when my homie, Spencer Matthews, told me he was getting engaged. Homie? Yeah, I, well, I don't know, I just changed up the language. Do we live in Compton? <laughs> well, yeah, maybe we do. <laughs> What's up, homeboy? But, <laughs> but I've also started spending way more time with this girl, and all I want to do is see her more, cook food and watch movies. Is this what you felt before you decided to get engaged, Spencer? Oh, mate, it's literally leaving the house was, was, it has become annoying for me. Yeah. Like, if I could spend every single night at home cooking with Vogue and just watching films, uh, I would. So the only the only reason I actually ever leave the house is because I don't want to become an antisocial hermit. Uh, but like honestly, we we couldn't be more comfortable and happy, and it is a delightful feeling. It's a delightful flat as it's well. It's just wonderful, yeah. It's also as if life in your twenties speeds up, and then towards the end of your twenties, because thank God you haven't joined the Twenty Seven Club, it slows down again. The Twenty Seven Club is violent, like <laughs> horrible. You, you know the list of celebrities that all died when they were twenty seven. I mean, there's, there's tons of them. Jimmy I Hendrix, mean, we, we, we uh, ba- Amy. We basically Amy aren't famous enough to, be, to, to, to have been on that list, even if we had died. <laughs> yeah. I you wouldn't catch people going around going like, "Oh, he's in the Twenty Seven Club." <laughs> people would just be like, "So what?" <laughs> Yeah. I am becoming neuro- Am I becoming neurotic because everyone around me is getting married or do I actually want to get married myself? Wednesday. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but I have eight brothers and sisters, two are full, three are half, and two are step. Big family, hence why I'm probably the loud and a slightly attention-seeking person I am. You're very attention-seeking. <laughs> what is strange about this is that my little You have brother- like seven shows about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what is strange about this is that my little brother, George, is 13 years old, has the same number as me at my school, Summerfields. Yes, we were like prisoners and given numbers. He's going to Radley College, my other school, and he's now performing in the same play as me called Smike, which I performed in when I was there, and he's also playing the same part as me and directed by the same teacher. To make matters even bigger, I'm taking my new friend with me as a date. Me and she'll meet the family, well, my dad and bro. Who is this woman? You, I've spoken to you about her. Oh, la petite française. Yeah, oui, the little, uh, the petite French. Uh, beard is full of poo. <laughs> yeah, 2% of your beard is poo. <laughs> As a kid, I always used to love being on stage, hence why I probably perform now, but going there made me realise how much fun I had at school. Strange, because I always remember having a bad time there, but instead, amazing memories flooded back. If you could turn back the clocks, would you want to revisit school again? Uh, I loved school, but I'd say I prefer my adult life. Uh, it was it was fab. I loved all the sports and stuff. But you know, having said that, I remain very active and play tons of sport now and stuff. And obviously, uh, I think would I change anything about school? Yeah, I'd, I would. I you know, I know it sounds stupid to kids listening now, but like I would have worked harder if yeah, I had a second I, I crack agree, at it. I agree. Just with um, the knowledge you gain, right? Also, just you know, like you just look like less of a mug. You know, like I was, I was quite naughty at school, but never got suspended, never got expelled, anything like that. But you know, my trips to the headmaster were fairly frequent, and um, we just had, we had a great time. But yeah, I, I would probably just take it slightly more seriously because it is important. And obviously, being at Eton, you might as well, you know, soak in as much knowledge as you can, uh, which I did not do. But uh, it's fine. I got an A level in French, which I was fluent in already, and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and an A level in art, which I, I and I'm very good at drawing. And so. then you went to UCLA and just smoked what was called the Chamber of Secrets. What was that thing called? That's Harry Potter. Yeah, but what was the chamber called that you smoked? <laughs> uh, I, there was a, there was a, yeah. My my friend again <laughs> uh, was rather fond of his weed in LA. Uh, it was a medical issue, and he had a cannabis card, so it. <laughs> It was legal. <laughs> uh, hey, um, Puggy Spencer Matthews, uh, dude, listen, thank you so much for coming on your Savior. Secondly, from the bottom of my heart, you know how proud I am of you, and, and you just going to make the best husband and everything like that in the entire world. I can't wait to be best man. I'm really, and thank you for everything. That, um, if you want to follow Spencer Matthews on Instagram, it's Spencer Matthews. He loves social media. Yeah. <laughs> he loves yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. You love that, don't you? I update. Uh, 
at least once weekly. So <laughs> yeah, keep an eye out for it. If you want to follow his uh, fiance Vogue Williams, she's under Vogue Williams. Um, he's also spending his fighting in um, a sports relief against Wayne Bridge, which is yeah. coming up, which is super exciting. And you've got Five Star Hotel coming up. Oh yes, which is really exciting. Five Star Hotel on E4. <laughs> cannot wait for that to come out. Oh, Mr. Spencer Matthew. Hey, buddy. Um, and to all of the listeners, remember, follow us on Instagram. It's a private podcast, Twitter and Instagram. Um, and Spen, thank you once again. But as we always do at the end of these sessions is we ask our guests in their own words and anything that they think, you can say anything you want. Can you leave us all with something inspirational? Crikey. Is that it? Uh, yeah. That, <laughs> if, you, uh, if you don't ask, you don't get. Like, you will all learn when I post an Instagram of the size of the hamper that Harrod sent me, <laughs> arrogance can be a good thing. And uh, <laughs> confidence is even better. So, you know, the, the, there's a fine line between arrogance and confidence. Try and lead on the side of confidence and you will go far. <laughs> and don't smoke pot. <laughs> Or that's, take acid. That's bad for you. Ah, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Lots of love. Bye. Yeah.